and Bloom News Brief. More info at fullandbloom.com. Guitar World Magazine recently published an interview with White Lion's Vito Brada, where the guitarist named 11 guitar players who helped shape his sound. A link to the entire list can be found in the description. Also, if you'd like to hear Vito's thoughts on Jimmy Page, we've included a bonus clip on our newly launched YouTube channel, Full and Bloom Plus. The channel will feature lots of previously unreleased long-form interviews, rare clips, and much more. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Full and Bloom Plus and don't forget to hit the bell. A link to the Jimmy Page bonus clip as well as a link to Full and Bloom Plus can be found in the description. On Eddie Van Halen, Vito said, This was a guy that taught all about what technique was. Like a lot of the kids around me back then, I used to sit in my room and practice for hours. I'd work on muting my strings so I didn't wake anybody up, and then I'd read that Eddie said he did the same thing, so I was like, okay, that guy's cool. But that aside, it was just the sheer technique that Eddie had. He forced me to say to myself, how do I elevate my technique? And remember, I was a young guitar player, and I'd been listening to a lot of the same old pentatonic scales and shit like that. When Eddie Van Halen came came along with all his new insane rapid fire stuff, a lot of what I had heard before that seemed to pale in comparison. But the thing that struck me most about Eddie Van Halen when he came out was that here was literally everything that I had been chasing wrapped up into one guy. He had the melody, the tone, the picking, the rapid fire stuff and he had the look of being a guitar player. He was the image of what I thought of when I thought about being a guitar player in a rock band, and it was all wrapped up into one person. It was unfathomable to me then, and it still is today. I will say this, once I became established with White Lion in the 80s, I got a lot of shit from people who said I was aping his style. That was all bullshit. It got to the point where I met Eddie once, and I asked him, does it freak you out that I play like you? I thought that because it had been drilled into my head by magazines and stuff. Now, I'm not the type of person to use Eddie's name for whatever, especially since he passed away. But I will say that Eddie complimented me and said that he didn't agree. I got to meet him once when he came into the studio during the recording of Main Attraction. He came in and he was sitting on my 5150 amp. I was blown away. Here I am standing in the studio watching Eddie Van Halen sitting on my amp jamming out on guitar. Eddie said a lot of nice things to me that day and I'll take them to my grave. But I'll tell you this, I was touched enough to where I had to leave the room, go to the bathroom, and cry. That might make me sound like a dick, but after being told I sounded like him, that I was copying him and all this shit, it meant a lot to hear that he liked what I did and that he respected it. On KK Downing, a lot of people think I took most of my style and sound from Eddie Van Halen. But the truth is, I got a lot more from KK Downing than Eddie in a lot of ways. The way KK used his tremolo bar was completely and totally his alone. And the way he used to come out and totally crush it on songs like Victim of Changes and things like that. Just incredible. The way he looked when he held that white Stratocaster was just awesome. I saw that and me and my friends were like, oh my god, dude, is that not the coolest fucking thing you've ever seen or what? KK Downing was just so visual and I loved the way he moved around on stage, held his guitar, and generally went about his business. On Randy Rhodes, since we're talking about Eddie, now is a good time to get it out of the way. I know a lot of people compare them, but it never made much sense to me. Randy was so different than Eddie because Randy had the whole classical thing happening. In that way, Randy and I were a lot alike. I'm not saying I was as good, better, or whatever compared to Randy Rhodes. How we were alike is in our mindset toward the guitar and music. I identified with Randy because he once said in an interview that he wanted to quit playing with Ozzy and go study classical guitar. And if I'm being honest, that was me in a nutshell. Rock is my base, it all begins there for me, and I venture off when I feel like it. But I'm basically a classical guitar nerd who played in a rock band. So when I heard what Randy said, I was like, yep, I could definitely go for that. And I eventually did. 
let me put it this way. If I were friends with Randy back then, I'd have said, okay, I'll do it with you. Let's go. I'm up for getting a degree in classical guitar, and I was all about classical guitar until recently, but I've since returned to playing rock music because I'm now able to again without the levels of pain I used to have, but that's another story. So I identified with Randy from a mental standpoint, and it did go on to affect me in that way down the road. But as far as Randy versus Eddie, they're so different. You didn't hear classical influences in Eddie's playing for the most part. Randy had this infusion of classical and he helped usher in this renaissance for that type of music within rock and metal in the 80s. He brought that in. And he also brought back the Jimmy Page thing with mixing acoustic and electric. His songwriting, the way he crafted things, and his mindset are all what influenced me most. When I heard Randy, I didn't think this this is the new Eddie Van Halen. He was his own thing. I think Eddie and Randy would both agree. On Ingve Malmsteen, me being different from Eddie, I was still in a phase of loving and absorbing his playing for a long time. Ingve Malmsteen got me out of that phase, but as far as style, Ingve didn't affect me too much. I think it was more his look and the use of the whitish strat with the Floyd Rose that I identified with when he came out. Now, I had a Floyd Rose before I saw him, but I found myself identifying with him through that. I remember when he came out, I was like, holy shit, how many times is he going to switch pickups? He made me want to go get a neck pickup installed in my guitar and left most of us with our jaws on the floor. I will say that I switched to a rosewood neck from Maple, and a lot of my later guitars had neck pickups after I saw Ingve. But he was so good that he made just about everybody question themselves as guitar players. As far as speed and all that, he was essentially unmatched. I remember saying to myself, don't even try and compare your speed to this guy, because I'd never be able to match that. I didn't even try. After Ingve came out, you had a whole lot of guys who tried to do what he did, and they failed at it. I knew immediately that I needed to do the opposite of that. What he was doing was otherworldly, so unlike a lot of other guys, I decided to go in a different direction. I chose to focus on songwriting, being accurate, and being melodic, and that was fine for me. So as far as Ingbe being an influence, he really served as an example of what not to do. It sent me in a new direction because I knew I'm not catching up with this guy. That made me convince myself that speed was not where it's that. It's a strange way to influence a person, but it's how Ingbe influenced me. He showed me in vivid detail what I shouldn't try to do. A link to the entire feature can be found in the description. More news at fullandbloom.com.